to the world of fair trade. Home decor, personal accessories, food products, skincare products, toys, instruments. It's all handcrafted, it all has a story, and all of it makes a difference. Hello Southridge, my name is Ingrid and welcome to 10,000 Villages in downtown Oakville. 10,000 Villages is North America's largest and oldest fair trade organization. In fact, we started over 60 years ago. At that point, the term fair trade didn't even exist. Poverty existed and so did exploitation. The world's become a much smaller place and we know we hear stories about the poverty that goes on in the world and the injustices there are. Fair trade is simply another way of doing trade. Conventional trade is almost all about making a profit. And profit is not a bad thing. Everyone needs to make a profit to grow their business. But conventional trade is almost exclusively about making a profit. And when all you want to do is keep your shareholders happy, pay your executives a lot, and make a big profit margin, then very often the people who are developing the product get lost. Conventional trade has many middlemen in between, and each one wants to buy low and sell high, which means that the person who's actually producing the product doesn't make a whole lot. So fair trade is different than that in all kinds of levels. One thing, we have no middlemen. We work directly with our producers. Secondly, we pay them half up front and the other half when the product is ready to leave the country. That means that they have capital to buy raw materials, to feed their children, to grow their businesses. We want to make sure that human rights are looked after, which means no child labor. And we want to make sure that women have an equal say in their groups and equal pay. We want to make sure the environment is looked after. We work with our producers to make sure the fuels are clean. They're using uh, products that are very sustainable, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, old tin, newspapers, things like that, very sustainable materials. We commit to our relationships and when we talk to our producers, that is one of the most important things for them because having a good order with good pay is one thing, but knowing you're going to get another order, you know, in three months, whatever the order uh, procedure is with that group makes a huge difference. You can't run a business just on feel-good thoughts. You have to have product behind it and boy do we have product at 10,000 Villages. This beautiful furniture comes from Indonesia where there are a lot of skilled craftspeople who know how to build furniture and carve wood. They've known how to do it for many centuries, but there isn't much wood left on Indonesia. And of course, we don't want to support cutting down of new wood, but we want to support the producers. So this furniture is made of wood that's been either buried under the earth for many centuries or decades, or it used to be doors or bridges and they've made this beautiful furniture. Every piece is a little different. The wood is well cured and it's just wonderful product. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of our products are made out of reduced, reused and recycled materials. On the top we have bags made from scrap tin pieces that they bought in Vietnam. On the second shelf we have things made also from Vietnam. They're made of recycled magazines and posters and these are made from newspaper that was never purchased. So how much better can you get than that? Reduced, reused, recycled, and fair trade. Personal accessories and jewelry have become really, really popular with 10,000 Villages. And a lot of them are made from reduced, reused, recycled materials. This lovely scarf I have here is made of scraps of silk that were cast-offs from uh, where they make saris. So they took the silk sari cloth and wove it into these beautiful silk scarves. They also come in bags and hats. On this wall here, we have jewelry from Kenya, from Peru, from India, and it's just one of a number of great, great products from bags to scarves to hats to bracelets, necklaces and earrings. We've got great product and it's all fair trade. Coffee and chocolate can be found in mainstream grocery stores and shops around the country because people are starting to know that it makes a difference and they're demanding it. And of course, people want to sell what the customer is going to buy. Fair trade coffee means that the producers are getting a fair wage. We don't have middlemen and uh, they're getting things like scholarships for their children and schooling and health care and lessons in agriculture. We also have wonderful jams and chutneys from Swaziland. Swaziland is a very poor country and a lot of these women who work on this are also supporting families on their own. We have oils and spices. We have an olive oil from Palestine, which is a group that works, it's Palestinians and Israelis working together. And we have uh, dried fruit from Colombia, which has no sugar, no preservatives, no color added, and it is the best dried fruit I bet you'll ever taste. 
Shopping fair trade isn't about charity or pity, it's about shopping fairly. No matter how you incorporate it in your life, if it's adding fair trade coffee to your daily routine or fair trade chocolate, whether it's buying fair trade gifts or accessorizing with fair trade or decorating your home with fair trade, it all makes a difference. Right now, 10,000 Villages has 49 stores across Canada alone, and they're all staffed in large part by volunteers. And we have web shopping, which means almost anyone can shop fair trade easily. Shopping fair trade is fun, it's easy, and it really makes a difference. Shop fair trade and you will change the world. Mm-hmm.